Well, we find that uh, both have, it's genetic in both, but males are, are almost always higher on the general trait, uh, and particularly on those uh, scales, subscales, that, uh, that deal with impulsivity, like uh, we call them uh, uh, disinhibition, for instance, one scale, and another thrill and adventure seeking. These are things men are particularly high on. These are things also that peak in adolescence and decline with age. Um, so that's an interesting thing uh, because uh, sensation seeking also peaks in adolescence. It's higher in men than women. Peaks in adolescence like late, late adolescence and declines with age. Well, in the past, sensation seeking was found in just the struggle for survival, hunting. I imagine the successful hunters were men who enjoyed it, even at the risk of hunting large mammals, uh, mammoths and things like that. Um, uh, war has always been fighting among men. This, it still is related to sensation seeking. Um, uh, but uh, in, a, in, a, in modern Western society where there's no war, uh, uh, most people find their sensation in other kinds of activities. For instance, thrill and adventure seeking. Well, ordinary sports don't provide much of that. Exceptional sports like skydiving and, uh, and hang gliding and uh, whitewater rafting and things like that provide uh, the sensation, thrill and adventure seeking, for a minority of people who engage in them. Your most average man, for instance, finds his uh, sensation seeking the way he drives his car, you know, and we find the high sensation seekers are more risky drivers. They drive at higher speeds. Uh, young males have more accidents. Uh, they, uh, they tailgate. They, they, they use their cars as a vehicle for thrill and adventure seeking and aggression. Uh, now, do you think that... But uh, I want to add to that. Sure. Sensation seeking isn't all thrill and adventure seeking. Sensation seeking uh, has outlets through... Uh, through, there's no other aspects through, uh, through uh, sex, for instance, uh, which is uh, part of, the, again, the reason for its survival. It was involved in seeking of mates. And some, uh, in the, some men and women need a lot of variety in their sexual outlets and behavior. And uh, uh, others uh, don't need that much variety and therefore are more monogamous. And uh, so that's in one area. Drugs, drinking, drugs, partying, these are all outlets for sensation seekers, okay? Uh, involving different kinds of risk, but involving risk nevertheless. Well, there is a four types of risk taking which f form the core, uh, you might say, of, uh, you know, Smoking, drinking, drugs, and sex. Okay. Now you can see three of those are substance abuses, and they act through the central nervous system. They act on centers in the central nervous system that give uh, intrinsic pleasure. Okay. Particularly uh, stimulant drugs like cocaine. You know, they they provide pleasure. They provide the kick that activities provide, like sex, provide for the for the uh, sensation seeker. And they're all correlated because they're all aspects of intensity-seeking sensation, okay? And then novelty, too. There's a difference, for instance, in drug users between those who are high sensation seekers and those who are low. Uh, I found this out when I was treating drug abusers. The uh, low sensation, well, the average sens low sensation seeking drug abuser tries one drug which he enjoys particularly and sticks to it. The lows try many different drugs. So then invariably they get into odd drugs like LSD that affect their minds as well as their, you know, their, uh, they provide unusual sensations as well as arousal. Okay. Uh, the lows uh, stay away from those drugs. I remember once sitting around in a discussion with, uh, in this uh, drug abusing community, and they were relating their drug experiences. And one of them was a high sensation seeking uh, LSD user, and he was talking about the and, and then another one was shaking his head, uh, and they asked him, uh, "Joe, what, what, why are you, you know, what do you think of this?" 
He says, man, that's crazy. He, this is a heroin abuser, you understand? That's dangerous. Why wouldn't anyone fool with that? That's dangerous. You fuck with your mind, you know? Uh, uh, he just couldn't understand it. He, he just used heroin, which, you know, which eventually, initially provides some highs, but eventually is used because it's, it's because of the lows. It just, you know, they, because you need it to stay feeling normal. Okay. You find, for instance, that uh, high sensation seekers, among the, there are not many men who love war and uh, combat, but uh, there are a few, there are some, who, who really find that exciting and will re-volunteer simply because they're bored with military life outside of combat. Okay. Uh, and uh, they're in, um, in uh, various uh, substances which are interesting in that they stimulate the same centers that, uh, that are stimulated by intense and novel uh, stimul external stimulation. Drugs do that more directly, particularly drugs like cocaine.